Nerd Soul. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us during what for most of you is the first hour of DesignerCon. We appreciate that you are here. Uh, my name is Daniela, and I'm going to introduce the people from our panel today. So we have Ahmed Bautista, the CEO from Mercadorama, an official merch company based in Mexico City. We have Anuad Lajon, Mexican fashion designer, creative of Mexico is the Shit, and former member of the music band Rabanitos Verdes. <laughs> Eduardo Chavarín, creative director, designer, branding consultant for clients like Coachella, Universal Music, Absolute Heineken, and Julio Cesar Chavez. And Carlos East, one half of the Peace Brothers, Mexican artist born in Mexico City and based in LA. Hi guys. Grab your mic. We can't hear you if you don't have a yeah. mic. Thank you everybody for coming. This Hola. is really early. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How's it going? Tell us about yourselves. Tell us a little bit more what you do. We can start with Eduardo if you want. Sure. Are, are we sharing? Yes. Yeah, this is, a t this is chill. This is, we're friends here. So. <laughs> so my name is Eduardo Chavarin. I'm a creative director. I, I was born in Tijuana, Mexico. Originally, I've been in Los Angeles for maybe about 22 years. I'm a graphic designer, creative director, um, working a lot of uh, music industry projects, a lot of clothing, apparel projects. I brought just a few images to share. I hope that you guys can see them. I know. I guess we can see them. So, I was the creator about 20 years ago of one of Mexico's first streetwear line. It was called Naco. And I know we're going to talk about piracy and bootlegging. So we were definitely pioneers in that area in, in Mexico, both celebrating other brands and then uh, just the industry and the bootleg industry really also celebrated our brand in their own way. So I don't have many complaints because I took inspiration from some brands and then they took inspiration from me, so it's a full circle. We were one of the first brands to do sneaker collaborations out there. This is something we did with Vans. We do a lot of creative work, consulting work, apparel work for, for different music festivals, bands and things like that. I've been working with the Coachella Music Festival for 20 years now, so we do a lot of design work with a great team over there. Of course, the Coachella brand is definitely very imitated throughout the uh, music landscape. I also do a lot of uh, music work, a lot of records, uh, poster work, merchandise work, things like that. This is a series of posters that we did with my dear friend Ahmed over here for the band The National. some records and festivals, uh, film festivals, music festival work that we do. And now, uh, since I like to get in a lot of trouble, I own a coffee shop in a 1940s vintage gas station in Koreatown. So yeah, just a little bit of what we do. And yep, that's me. Thank you guys. So um, we are Mercadorama. Mercadorama is an official merchandising company in a counterfeit country. Mexico is absolutely counterfeit in everything, no? And it started because there was nothing in Mexico. So when you want to have something, somebody does the copy of those, that, of those things you see in the, popular, in the popular culture in the world. So what we started doing was trying to take the money from the bad guys and give it to the good guys which is the music industry, back in 2009, when they were not earning a dime, only for shows. So, everything started in 2003, when Pearl Jam came to Mexico to play a concert, and they brought all these, how can I say, like all these organized merchandising booths that we've never seen. So we started buying posters, seal screen, sign and number posters, and t-shirts, which quality was amazing, caps and patches, and that's when we realized, I was 22, when we realized everything outside the venues was counterfeit. So we were buying for 20 years without knowing we were buying counterfeit shit, because the only thing that was outside the venues. 
So that's when we decided, okay, let's start something that creates this um, virtuous circle that gives the money to the good guys and gives you a quality garment so you can be a fan and sponsor your band's career and everything else, no? So everything looked like this back then. When you go to a Pearl Jam concert in Mexico, there's 2,000 stalls outside. 2,000, I'm not kidding. Yeah. So everything looked like this. So we decided to do a merchandising that in the label would tell the story and the philosophy behind. It was, you are the sponsor of the band. The band is making the music you enjoy, pay official stuff so you can make them do the full cycle, right? So we were like teaching the new audience. And also, Ahmed, I remember you mentioned something about you wanted that everyone involved got a benefit from it. Yeah. You, it was not just the bad guys organized. It was everyone involved in the process, the band, the designer, the people doing the merch, the people creating the merch. So The printers, no? Right. Yeah, right. the philosophy was everybody who's involved in the process should be benefited. If somebody's getting fucked, we don't do it. So from the designer to the manufacturer to the vendor to the venue to the band, and at the end, everybody, even the licenses, were getting money. You know? That was the idea behind it, 2009. We just wanted to sell t-shirts. That's how we started, 2009 in Coachella. Instituto Mexicano del Sonido, the band was Mexican Institute of Sound in the US. So we started creating t-shirts and all the designs. And when you go to the, to the counterfeit stalls, there's a t-shirt, and that t-shirt is the only one they all have. Then they have 20 t-shirts, but it's one design is that. So one of the things we wanted to be different at was maybe you're gonna have the same design, different colors. So we were just trying. We, there was nothing to be compared at, so we were just trying. And then we started doing things like inviting graphic artists to do posters. Why we invited graphic artists to do seal screen posters? Not only because we were collectors, but because a seal screen hand-printed sign and number poster is not easy to be pirated or copied or bootlegged. It's not easy and it's not um, cheap, it's expensive. So that's where we found the gold mine. We say, okay, if we invite graphic artists, designs are gonna be different. They're not gonna be online. It's not the logo, the logo type of the band or the record cover. It's gonna be something different each show. So we can get there. So we started inviting graphic artists and now we are a graphic artist collective, more than a merchandising company. And this is what we do. We have a booth here where we're showing that. And we started doing things for the band and their staff. And that's what everything changed. Why? because the counterfeiters can copy that. They will buy a garment that is already made and will print it, that's it. And when we do cut and sew, that's where we got like this differentiation we were looking at for so many years. And at the end, all those graphic artists working with us start traveling with us to exhibit posters and start painting murals around the world. This is Hamburg. And then we got invited to conventions like this and that's where everything changed and we got like finally separated from the counterfeit market. And we ended up going to Glastonbury many times, Primavera Sound every year, working with Coachella, thanks to Eduardo Chavarín, giving lectures, doing posters. And at the end, all those jackets we were making for the staff ended up being the jackets used by the bands while, we, while they play. And what happens when a band uses or wears a garment with it, it immediately becomes merchandising. So we can sell it to the fans. And there is where an uni uniform was designed by the partner I got in 2016. Okay. And Anor and I became partners and he designed a new jacket, not only the denim jacket with the eagle on the back, he said, let's do a new uniform. Hi everyone, my name is Anor Layon. As I already told you, I'm a fashion designer and um, thank you for being here. Um, yes, as already I met all about our story and um, it was pretty fun because the other side of the of the story is that he was trying to find someone who create a special edition of, of cotton and sew um, uh, stuff for the merchandise. So that's how we met, like basically because of a Mentos t-shirt that I, that I create for an agency in Mexico City. And yeah, when we decided to, to do, well I decided to split from my business partner for 10 years and, and we were trying to figure out what we were supposed to do uh, for, for our next company or for our uh, next project. And, and yeah, we decided to do something together and one, one of my first steps, uh, uh, how I get into the company was to create something as a uniform so, so the people can use it. Uh, and the people from our team and, and collaborators of the, of the company. So I basically decided to 
create something that sets Mexico at some point and that everyone understand what, what we were supposed to tell the people about Mexico, what to think about Mexico. And so I created this phrase um, that says Mexico is a shit. And it's, it's pretty, it's, it's, it's like, a, like a whole trip um, um, happening like for these last years. We, we created a jacket like three years ago and, and you know as a fashion designer and in my perspective as a creative uh, director or as a designer, uh, it's difficult because it responds on something that I mean, like, you have two sides, right? The, the, the one that you create something and, and you have the sentimental issues when you find piracy around uh, Mexico City or around the world or wherever you can find it. And, and the other one, like, in, in Mexico, we have that regularly. So um, when we say, uh, like, there's people who, who can get to you and tell you that um, when, when, you, when you get bootleg, when, when, you get, when, you, when you find some piracy from your, from your brand, it's like you're, you're having success, you achieve your success. Um, and it's hard because it, it wasn't supposed to be like that, you know? Um, so, uh, yeah, we find out a lot of things. Um, yeah, this is when it got viral. Uh, that's the first photo that got viral with our friend uh, Carlos Lang, who is a, a, an Instagrammer. And we also have this two more photos. You want to talk more about Corona Capital and a picture of a teacher? Um, yeah, well, um, ah, okay. Um, so, <laughs> so these eagles of that metal, um, war paint wearing the jacket. We're pretty close to the music industry, so it's pretty easy to us to meet like a manager or someone who's involved with a band. So when they saw the jackets with the, with the, with the graphic artist working on the Corona Capital, which is a Mexican music festival, uh, they, they just want to wear the jacket when they get into the, into the uh, stage. Um, Iggy Bob and, and um, what's the name of the drummer? Uh, Lars Ulrich, yes. And this is part of the bootleg that we found. Like every, every day we found like at least 20, thing, 20 different things that are not original, that, not, that they are not made by us. Wait, I want to stop and, you right there because you said something important that yeah. said that we are in a culture that we always think that you've made it once you have a piece of yours bootlegged or thrown into piracy. So I want to know your opinion as a designer. When you see this and you go to Tepito and you see it, Tepito is this big market in Mexico City. Um, what are your thoughts? Like, do you think it's flattering? Do you think it's like, it, it, what's that gray area as a designer and your thoughts and feelings about it? Do you think you've, you've really made it? Like, how, how does that make you feel when you, someone says, oh, you made it. You got bootleg, you made it. It's like, yeah, but... Uh. I mean... As a creator, it's kind of hard because right. you have like the legal part and, and on the, the professional part of it, but then you have the sentimental well because it's something that it, that you create that it's that it's from you. So yeah, I don't think that you made it when you get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. For me, it's when they started copying everything we did. Everybody said like, yeah, if you're in pop culture, you made it. You made you're it. successful. And for us, it's no, we created the company against it. Right. And second, and most important, somebody's getting the money, not the creator. Exactly. So yeah. it's like, okay. it's something that shouldn't be praised. But what happened when all artists, like some artists copy Mickey Mouse? You know, like yeah. for example, right now, I'm Carlos Is, by the way, uh, one half of the Is Brothers, and the creative director of our new brand called Mexican Bootleg. And uh, what we try and to figure out is like when an artist, for example, like uh, Koss, based his character in, you know, kind of like a Mickey Mouse kind yeah, of thing, yeah. because it's pop culture. So when, where is the line? You know what? Like, but you think when, that's, that's a question. Exactly, yeah. because at the end, somebody's gonna make the money and people get pissed because they're like, oh, you're making the money, I should be making. But you're like, no, because you're, you know, you're copying X, Y, or C, or you're basing your art in X, Y, or C, like you, 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 they say, like nothing is original. Somebody is always yeah, like everybody's copying or inspired, inspired by. Exactly. So would that be called a tribute I, now? I, I, I do understand the, the yeah. I do understand the fact that when somebody's copying exactly your thing, they like oh, it's upsetting. But if you're doing it like you know, like the Mexican bootlegs, we get 
we got when we were little, or like, for example, the stuff that Chavarin was doing with Naco, which is funny, you know, it like has a sense of humor. So where, where do you think is the line? Where do you think is the line where you, you, we should be like, oh, you know what, that's clever, or like, oh man, they're ripping me off. What do you think? I, I think there's a line that it's been established, like it's almost okay to bootleg the big corporations, right? Because they've made, right. but even though those big corporations are owned by individuals that work very hard, right? But for some reason, it feels, doesn't feel as bad to bootleg Mickey Mouse or SpongeBob because, oh, they already made millions of dollars, right? But then when you bootleg the little guys, it's almost like you're, you are taking food off their table, of right? Course. So I, I also think there's a, another tier, for example, for the ones that are fanatics and where you're trying to put a product out there where, you know, the whole fashion or art scene, it's also about being fresh and getting the new thing or having the newest sneakers. So when your product ends up in every corner or in a secondhand market, right, it devalues what you're doing, right? Now you go to a party, now everybody has it, right? And it's not the original or you paid a full amount of money and things like that. So there's many layers to it, you know, but we come from a culture where I guess only the strongest survive. So, so in our case, we did it to the big corporations. We appropriated logos, right, into pop culture and things like that. And then the same society and the same cycle started bootlegging our things, you know, so so I mean I don't have an answer I just have opinions and those are my two cents on this. And a little bit going into the layer one of the layers that you touched about the money thing where a sp something becomes a special edition because now it's different from the rest of everything that you've been doing. Can we talk a little bit about the culture behind paying extra money or a lot of money for those editions that they become special more pricey? Yes. Right. So my two cents on that are, is that I think one way to uh, combat piracy is doing a great job on what you do and just doing better, better quality, right? I don't think a person that pays $5 for a shirt is really in the mindset that, oh, if the original one was next to me, I would pay 60 for it, right? It, these are two different kinds of people. I think then on the designer side, then it's our obligation almost to elevate your product and make sure there's a huge distinction from packaging, the way you market it, of course, the feel of the product and things like that. So for us, when we were doing um, our own clothing line in Mexico or, or when working on a project like Coachella, we try to just give customers 110% in a product. So when they pay top dollar, they really notice the difference. And I think, for example, it's happening a little bit with the music industry where, where vinyl sales are up, right? People want an experience, the full artwork, the big booklet and things like that. So I think there's two different markets for it. And if you cater to the good one and you put a lot of quality into it, it should pay itself. Yeah, I totally agree. And also with your question, like there's niches for everything. Now there's a niche of buying bootleg toys from Japan, no? And what you want is the one that it's like, like the worst made. Yeah, with the Yeah, with uh, seams. With seams? Where you see the seams and the paint is a little off. So you pay triple or four the price because it's wrong made. Yeah, because no? it's backwards. There's a niche for that. For us in the music industry with the seal screen posters, the big collectors don't want to just buy the poster. They want to buy the AP, the artist proof that was misprinted, that it's shifted or some some inks overlapped. Yeah, so like they the want to have that unique piece and they yes. pay more. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, I, I, I think it goes, and, and it also connects with the last question, it goes also into different, different economic levels. Like in a developed country like the US, you can have those things, no? or Japan. Yes. You can have the guy buying piracy or counterfeit things because it's cool to buy that or to be punk or to do something yeah but also the one who can pay like the full price super high quality but then in mexico which is an underdeveloped country you have these guys saying like no i buy this because i cannot afford the other one so it's a way to to be against capitalism no yeah it's it, it gives a service to me somebody's doing something cheap because i can afford it and then you have all these people that you want to try to convince to pay like the real money and they're also against it because who's getting that money? No? It's like they feel robbed from the beginning. 
Yes. No, it doesn't matter if you have quality or not. So the thing is, of course, that's a perfect paved way for piracy and counterfeiting because in Mexico you have all these tianguis on the street that come every Tuesday and every Friday and you find everything that you are wearing, they will have the copy on those tianguis. So it's something cultural that comes from birth. Like they don't see it in a wrong way. We're talking about it here. But if you ask a Mexican, like low class, economically speaking, of course, um, and you ask them about piracy, they don't even know it's piracy. Right. Because it's what it's available. Yeah. Like, it's the reason. And it's there. Yeah. It's a long hiding right. fruit, and they have to pay for their six kids' clothing. Yeah. 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 So, and the kid wants Supreme. And huh? the kid wants Cost. <laughs> exactly. And, no, and there's also this other, this other whole thing about like these creative people doing stuff that is not being made, like for example, by Louis Vuitton. Like there's all these people doing like sweatpants that super important artists like Rosalia or Billie Eilish are wearing. And they're not official, they're bootlegs, but it's this stuff that is really cool and it also looks like those high-end brands. And it's, I think it's the, there is the, the, the creativity of making something that doesn't exist, that looks that it could exist, and also the quality is really high. So what do you think about that? Like, what do you think about that, like the creative thing? Because like, I also believe that those kind of things make those huge brands uh, stronger because it yeah. keeps them like in the loop, you know, because yeah. it, it makes them uh, it, uh, available for like younger people, like also like people that cannot buy the super expensive stuff. It's like the Dapper Dan story, you know, and yeah. fashion, talking about fashion. It's like, I don't know if you know this guy, Dapper Dan, who creates this uh, special edition of jackets and he was really involved in the hip hop industry with all these guys creating like new stuff and then he got sued uh, by Louis. Louis Vuitton or Gucci, I don't remember exactly who, uh, but it's, it's exactly the same because he was elevating, do you know, the, 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 the street culture, creating with, with like really good quality and, and, and you know, like uh, focus on the, on the, on the hip-hop industry so he wants to create something special for them and I think that that's good, that's cool, I mean it's, it's like the same that you're doing right now with the Mexican bootleg thing, like, you, you like the cause, right? Yes. You, so he inspires you to create that. Exactly. And, and you're doing like a really, really good quality product that inspires other, other people to buy it and, 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 and to, to still create it because you're a really good artist and you, you do like really good stuff. So, um, I mean, that's, that's a way to elevate the, the artist. And, and, and I mean, like, for me, that's not piracy. It's totally different. Like, but as a brand, when you see your stuff being bootlegged or pirates, like, like for example, right here, you have the dog t-shirts that obviously you guys didn't start it with it. Does it fill the gaps seeing that stuff like, oh, well, maybe that's what we need to create. Maybe that's something that we need to get into. Like the example that you made with Louis Vuitton creating the sweatshirts. You think those brands are thinking, this is what the people want? Why are we not making it? I, like, is it is it raising questions? Yeah, I think that happens because it's like, oh, so people want that. Let's make that the real thing. Yeah. And I also think, like, for example, with the Mexico is a shit. It's like the same thing that happened with uh, Gut Milk. With Gut Milk was a huge campaign that it became so big that people started making their own thing, like Gut Hemp and et cetera, et cetera. And I think that when you create something so powerful like Mexico is a shit that transcends. And people start like kind of making bootlegs because those are not uh, counterfeit. They're both. They're both. Well, yeah. yeah the fine. difference, like you know, when this counterfeit is when they're copying your thing to make it look like it's the real thing, but yeah. it's not. And then the bootleg is the ones that are like doing like stuff different. Yeah. So by your exactly. Like, the, that's it. The, the difference. Like there's people that don't like either. There's people that have fun and think it's like clever, and. Uh, I don't know what do you think about that when that happened to Mexico and shit, but I think like it's flattering in the sense that when you created like a, a, a you know a, a phrase that is so powerful that people yeah it's like a slogan you created a slogan so now everybody's gonna be like oh yeah that's based on Mexico and shit and if you see the, the the bootleg ones you know exactly where it's coming from it's not you're not gonna say like oh where is that from like you you know where it's coming from so I think it's like it's that's the flattering part of it. But that's a little bit what he was saying about people having certain resources available. They might not know. For them, this Mexico is the shit might be the only Mexico is the shit. They might not 
know where it's coming from because that's what we were talking about. Um, like if if you go if you go into a market and what are you looking to me like that? Ah, uh, <laughs> like if it, it's not making sense or what? Going to your first question, I think it is somewhat beneficial to the brands, right? So this bootleg ends up. Um, uh, I don't know, a uh, hip hop artist ends up using this sweatshirt that he, they made for the video and then becomes popular and be, becomes viral. I think the brand does get informed of what, where the trend is going, what the public wants, what sector of the population wants their product. If you go to a Louis Vuitton store right now, it looks like a streetwear shop. Right. 20 years ago, it looked like a very high-end high premium end. shop where yeah. you would buy a luxury luggage, it's right? It's still luxury, it's just a different the price, way of... The price is luxury, yeah. right? Yeah, the, exactly. It's a, you're paying a premium, yeah, quality, but really. you're buying hoodies now and right. a, a collaboration with Supreme and things like that. Yeah. I mean, just their creative director, right? Going from, yeah, from, from Mark yeah. Jacobs or those guys that used to work for the brand and now to Virgil, I think it, right. it tells where they want to take the brand in its social media and it's the informal market that it's informing the brand where they need to go or they might choose not to, right? Okay. Um, I heard that when, for example, in an example, when Little John started rapping about drinking Don Julio on his own and endorsing the brand, Don Julio reached out to him to say, maybe if we befriend them, we can control the dialogue a little right. bit, right? So some things take their own road on their own, right? And take life on their own. Sometimes they're controlled by the brand. And, and God knows what the brand is allowing to happen and, yeah. and not allowing to happen, right? Right. And 20 answers to all these questions. Do it. Okay, so the first one, <laughs> and picking where you, when you started with the music, yeah, it happened in the 90s with Korn, no? They were using Adidas, Adidas pants, vintage. And then Adidas came up and said, okay, let's do something called Originals, no? Because the kids are wearing it, the teenagers are wearing it, so we should appeal to that market, no? And sometimes the brands are kind of getting old, and this is the way they do their research, which is what happened to us, no? Of course, we saw them, the little dog jacket, and we said, we wanted to do a dog jacket, we should do it now, because they are there doing it, no? And it was a huge supermarket, it was a huge supermarket. I remember that story, no? so, that's the first thing, yes. One thing is a market research, like an immediate market research for you, and you should be open to understand it. Not necessarily be flattered, but understand it. That's the first thing. Second thing is, and, and, and seeing what we see here. There's this, we were talking, Eduardo and me, there's this legal hole, or loophole, that gives you the chance to do an artistic interpretation of something. So you can do your own Batman, you can do your own Spider-Man, you can do your own cause, and Nothing legal can be there. We, on the other side, cannot sue, like legally sue somebody in Mexico that says Mexico es la verga. Because even thing. though the jacket is the same, the colors are the same, the typography is the same, it doesn't say the same. And when it says the same, if the buttons are different, it's artistic interpretation, it's a variation. So that loophole affects us, but on the other hand, gives the artist, a graphic artist, a chance to be discovered no? So if somebody does something here that is amazing, it's up to DC or Marvel or Disney to come and say, hey, that Boba Fett is amazing. We Disney who own Star Wars, let's do a collaboration with you. Yeah. That'll be the clever thing to do. Yeah, that and that's what's happening now, which is what happened with, with fashion. No? With fashion, what happened was first they started doing some counterfeit things and some interpretations, and now all the high end fashion brands are saying, no, bring those guys to do sneakers bring that capsule collection to do this luggage with that guy because we want his signature there because it sells more and it appeals to a different audience. And if it appeals to a niche, it will end up being mainstream. It's just a matter of time, no? And when it's mainstream, we find a new one. So that's super cool. And just to answer the last question, the line, the fine line between tribute and inspiration and counterfeiting is, for example, we even find funny some of them. No, Tepito, as, as Daniela said, Tepito is this illegal market that exists, that we all know since the Aztecs, no? And there's a, a, a t-shirt that says, Tepito is the shit. And it's funny, no? Because it's true, Tepito is the shit, even more than Mexico. And the thing is, the best boxers, boxer athletes, like box athletes, come from Tepito in Mexico sometimes, no? Or, or the best football, soccer players. 
So the t-shirt on the front had these box gloves, like you were training, no? And it was so funny to see that that's a tribute, and you find it, no? But then you find all the other counterfeiting things, which is, I mean, this is Mexico. You can find that on Amazon and Etsy on eBay, and all those are counterfeiting. And we have contact the, the platforms, and they don't take them down because it's Mexico, no? So again, this is counterfeiting. Some of these are tribute. No? Tulum is the shed, and they put these almost naked girls over there. Well, maybe that's Tulum for them, no? It's funny. And then you get the next level, which is ah, so I can copy and I can take a tribute. So this is again the dogs fighting against the guns, no? It's like, this is Volkswagen, and that's Victoria, Cerveza Victoria. They got mad because we didn't want to make a jacket saying Victoria is the shed. So they did their own Mexico is the shed, Mexico is chingon, no? Campaign. So again, it's when the country allows it to happen, it's gonna happen in all the ways. In countries that doesn't allow that, there comes this inspiration and artistic interpretation that gives you a different lecture or a different reading of something popular, which is a phenomenon. So I think it's both things. It's good and bad. It's but like, it's definitely a cultural thing because uh, you obviously know about this. They just got into a whole issue with Guillermo del Toro. They used the image without his permission. And it's, it's Victoria. Like, this is a big beer in Mexico. They used the image without his permission and his response is, well, like, obviously, Guillermo knows how things roll here. Victoria doesn't know how things are rolling in other parts of the world. I mean, we know. We can tell. The answer from Guillermo is, just donate that. I'm not, I'm not going to go against you guys. And that was, that was nice of him. You know, that was very nice. Because if Smart, I was Victoria... Because he wouldn't win. Yeah, yeah it would have been a lot of money per can. Like, a lot of money. So it's that part where you're like... Who's in charge here that it's not understanding how things work around the world? Because one thing is that you're, you can be a product in Mexico, you can be a company in Mexico, but if you're as big as a beer company that like Victoria's and if you're using the image from a designer, from a, a, a artist, from a director like Guillermo del Toro, you should know the rules in general. Like it, it has to become I cultural. Think, I think they do it on purpose. <laughs> like, oh yeah, we're super disruptive so we can be assholes. Which is Victoria, that's how Victoria works. Yeah, because they can. Right. If they did it in the US, no. they would be fucked. No, forget it. Yeah. They that's couldn't it. get any further. That's the other thing, like, when we, like, little, like, or smaller artists do these things, it's like, like you said, like a tribute, it's like, you know, like a little commentary on the, the whole art scene about like the whole flipper thing and all that stuff, but when companies like Victoria or the Volkswagen, like you guys have the, the, the means to do this right, why, why are you choosing to do it wrong? I mean, if it doesn't feel right with a company so big makes like a counterfeit or like a bootleg, like, it feels weird. You, you, you just gave me, sorry that I interrupted you, you just gave me an example that sparked in my head. In Mexico, beer companies were looking after us asking to give millions or so, but they want to make their own thing. It was not like your brand is something that I'm interested in. It was like, I want your brand to be corrupted and be my brand, no? That was the way it looked like. I want to make a takeover of it. And the same beer company that in Mexico offer us something that we didn't like, not Victoria, another one, in the US, thanks to Eduardo and Remezcla and some other agencies, created an amazing campaign that I forgot to put here that would be an amazing Example, Dos X is a Mexican beer, right? But in the US, it's super famous because of the Dos X man, the interesting man, and so on. So they wanted to do something called Keep It Interesante, no? Talking about biculturalism in the Trump era, no? Talking about um, different nationalities all converging in the same place and being bicultural and being born here, but also being Latino or Hispanic or things. Of course, that ring the bell. And that touched us, and we said like, yeah, that's what Mexico is the shit is about. Let's do it. And we developed a can that was sold at Coachella. And we have all this campaign in YouTube about giving the back to all those who talk shit about you and showing them you're making this place amazing and you're making the US amazing because we're all this culture merging together in a place that is free to do whatever you want. And that's exactly the example, no? Saying like, 
yeah, you, you have the means, you can do it right. Put the money here and let's make a good cause about it. Be or smart. be a fucker, like we thought. Yeah, it. just be smart and do and things it, right. And, and, it's not, and it's not only about money, because even if they call us to help us to spread the word about how great Mexico is for us, because that's the most important idea for us when we create a movement. So, um, I mean, like, it's totally different, the approach, the, the approach that they made with us. It, um, so, it goes pretty well. What do you guys feel about technology with all this? Is it helping? Is it not helping? Is it making things worse for you guys as brands and creators? What's the deal with that? It depends on the side of the river you are at. Mm. Um, because, for example, for the counterfeiters, technology has made everything easier. No? Um, the music industry is a great example. They were doing things that were difficult to copy. But then after three years, the counterfeiter market has those, those machines, no? Um, and that's why the vinyl isn't copied. It's not at the scale as we are used to, because doing a vinyl requires million dollar machines. and requires time and water and plastic. And there's a lot of research, but copying a CD, you can buy it on Office Depot and print it, no? It happens the same if, if you have cheaper technologies to print a t-shirt, there's gonna be a lot of bootleggers in Mexico. But if you have those technologies applied to legal resources, like in the US, if you upload an image that infringes, infringes, am I doing, am I saying right? Legal rights or property rights, you just have to upload a video with a song that you don't have the rights to YouTube, and in seconds it's gonna in be seconds, down. It's down. Instagram so that's technology down. to the good side, against technology in the bad side, no? It depends. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess we can all agree that original and creative design is gonna change the world and the way we see things, especially in Mexico. Any final comments that you guys wanna wrap this with? At least for me, it's like Eduardo said, it depends on your creativity and the level of quality you wanna give, that it's gonna make it difficult for the counterfeiters to copy, and it's gonna make the choice easy to the audience to buy your stuff. No, that's a real difference. And about graphic artists and things, what Carlos said is good, it's like, this can be the door that you can open, no? If you, if you are inspired by, by a popular culture image or, or icon, and you get there, and you do it in your own way, giving a different lecture, it can open the door to a collaboration. But you have to be pumped about it and try it and be creative and disruptive yeah. and come to the right places like here, no? And be fair, you and know, be fair, yeah. a big company, be fair. Yeah. Yeah. In regards to your question about technology, I, I took it more in regards to social media, right? And I think it's definitely a plus, right? I mean, you might think you had a great idea and then, uh, I don't know, Instagram will check you immediately and someone will tell you, hey, there's this artist doing something similar, or right? So I think it's elevating the game in a sense where, where now all the books are out in the open, right? It's not easy just to take something and reappropriate it. The, the whole system will check you, and I think it's great, right? Or it will help you create a community. Oh, you collect vinyl also? Well, I do too, right? So it pushes these niches. So I think in social media, that kind of technology, it's great. It's elevating the game. It's helping you create communities. So I think in that sense, it's very, very helpful. Yeah. No, for sure. And, and it's funny because I'm, I'm sure this has happened to you guys. With my baby small brand, I have people telling me like, look what this, is, this brand is doing. And I just get messages from random people saying like, this looks like you, this looks like you. And yeah, you're right. It definitely helps. You, got, you have eyes everywhere. So it's going to be out there if someone tries to do it. Yeah. Yeah, do you guys have any questions? We're open for questions right now. But also, where can we find you if we want to see you here at Decon? What booths are you guys at? Booth 343. We are there, Mexico Zuchet, Mercadorama, and Anwar Rayon's collaboration, official collaboration licensing the with Simpsons. The Simpsons. Yeah. For the first time in the US, right? Uh, recently, we introduced that collection. It was the first time that a Latin America designer creates like a high-end collection for The Simpsons, and you can find it there. We are at the end of the hall uh, A or something. I don't no, remember it's only the name of the hall, but yeah, we're at 343. You're on C. All right, so yeah, Call see C. you there. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, for me, I'm not showing here, but if there's a beer garden, you can probably find me there. <laughs> uh, uh, my name is... <laughs> yeah. If you point me in the right direction, I'll be there. Uh, my name is Eduardo Chavarin, and my Instagram handle is ECH13.
And uh, I'm with uh, Mercado Mexa in the C booth uh, 612. And then uh, over there we have a bunch of uh, other Mexican artists. Really talented Mexican Very artists. Talented. Some live here, some came from Mexico. So if you want to come check us out, we have a lot of really cool stuff over there. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you Very so nice much, Very nice bootleg guys. versions he has. All the bootleg. <laughs> Well, thank you. Enjoy your time at DesignerCon. There are going to be more panels happening. Check out social media for times and the name of the rest of the panels. And enjoy. Have fun. Thank you. Thank you.